For this topic, we're going to discuss TIA, which also leads to CVA, which is a stroke, but we're going to talk specifically about transient ischemic attack, which is a TIA. A TIA is a warning sign that a stroke is going to happen. So sometimes patients can have like a couple of TIAs and they call them mini strokes or pin strokes before like a big stroke happens. So we have to be on the lookout for these TIAs because if we discover them, then we can do some lifestyle modifications or medication that will help prevent future strokes. Let's look at the causes. So causes of a TIA. A TIA is also a blood clot that is moving in the body. So it is an embolism. It was a thrombus and now it's an embolism and it is moving up to the brain causing the stroke. So we gotta look at some of the causes of why we would develop these embolisms or blood clots that are moving. Okay, so one is atherosclerosis, which just means a fatty plaque buildup in the arteries. The other one is arteriosclerosis, which is a hardening, a thickening of the arterial wall. Sometimes these words are used interchangeably. They're very similar and they basically mean about the same thing. Now, why does someone get this? It's usually from lifestyle. So, smoking, hypertension, diabetes, a high sugar content in the blood also produces more. Um, it hangs out and builds up, contributes to the buildup of fat in the arterial walls. A high fat diet and a high cholesterol diet contributes to this as well. Cardiac disease, so maybe there's like um, some valve malformations or things like that. So other heart disease problems can lend you to be more at risk for TIAs. AFib is a dysrhythmia of the heart. So with this abnormal rhythm, uh, atrial fibrillation, the heart just kind of quivers. When it quivers, the blood can't empty out completely enough and then some of the blood sits and collects and makes clots. And then those clots leave the heart and then they go up to the brain and cause a TIA or a stroke. So AFib patients may, will usually be put on warfarin or other um, blood thinning medications, or anticoagulants to prevent strokes from happening. Diabetes puts a patient at risk for TIAs because over time that constant high sugar in the blood can lead to a buildup of cholesterol and fat within the arteries. Diagnostic test. A carotid artery brewery can be heard with your stethoscope. It basically just means that there is narrowing there in the artery and when you hear that when there's a narrowing there it creates this brewy which is a sound a swooshing sound over the carotid artery so you take the bell of your stethoscope and you put it over the carotid artery on the neck and listen and you can hear the swooshing sound of the narrowed artery and that's kind of indicative that there is some some sort of our atherosclerosis disease there which may point to the fact that yes maybe they did have a TIA. Very cool. Next is the ultrasound that shows plaques. So you can basically take the ultrasound wand and hold it there and look and you can see the plaque in through the ultrasound. An MRI will show plaque build up and then a CTA. CTA is a computed tomography angiography. So an angiography is where they inject dye and look at vessels. Then they can see the narrowing of the arteries. What are the symptoms of a TIA? For a TIA, you maybe not have the full blown symptoms of a stroke, but you will have some weird things happen that would make one go to the emergency room. So some temporary lightheadedness is common, confusion, not really sure what happened to me, something did, I'm just really confused, or maybe you're kind of confused as in disoriented for a while. Slurred speech, diplopia, and vision loss, so you have some vision changes. A change in consciousness, uh, numbness, weakness, one-sided. So most of the time when you have a stroke, it is going to affect one side 
of the body. So whichever side of the brain the stroke happens on, if it happens on the left side of the brain, it's going to affect the right side of the body. And vice versa, if it happens on the right side of the brain, these symptoms will appear on the left side of the body. So it's crisscrossed. Paralysis is one-sided, so they may have some paralysis, but usually if it's a TIA, it's going to be temporary and they may fully recover from the TIA. Over here we have the FAST acronym, which helps us remember the immediate, oh yes, you are having a stroke symptoms, and it kind of gives us a what to do. Okay, so the first one is face, so one-sided face droopiness. But with a TIA, they may not have the face droopiness because the TIA is temporary and it may come and go so fast that they don't have any ischemia that's happened that makes that face droopiness on one side. But face droopiness on one side, arm will be a weakness on the same side affected arm, they have arm weakness or arm numbness or tingling or pain maybe. Uh, speech, so difficulty speaking. So if you ask them, can you say apple, they may try to say it, but it's not working out so good. Another thing you can do for, um, well I guess for face, is to tell them to smile. And if they smile, you'll see that the smile is not symmetrical and the eyebrows are not symmetrical. Then when they smile, one side is going to be like this. So they'll be disrupted. And then time. What time did the symptoms start? And that is because of treatment. So with time is important because within three hours is generally what the literature says, within three hours a special medication called TPA can be given that would bust up the clot uh, of the stroke. So we have to know what time the symptoms started to know how much time we have left to give this medication and see if they're a candidate for that spe special medication. Now let's look at the nursing care and treatment options for the patient with a TIA. We want to make sure we get a complete history from the patient. That includes social history, any history of smoking or drinking alcohol, any drug use. You want a list of medications. You want a list of their previous surgeries. You want a list of their diet, what their medical history is. So you do have diabetes, have blood pressure, what other medical diagnoses do you have? Those type of things. We want to know basically everything about the patient. Anyone who presents with a neurological symptom should have a neuro check done. The neuro checks can be simple or they can be in depth. But for general nursing care, we will do just a simple neuro check. We will check their pupils, we will check their sensory and motor function, the pull, squeeze, pull, squeeze, when we did our head to toe assessment, that's a part of the neuro check, checks the motor reflexes. We'll assess for pain, can you feel this? Deep pain, light pain, light pressure, deep pressure, we'll check for those things. We'll also check at facial asymmetry, so can you smile for me, and then can you talk? So can they speak clearly and enunciate words or are their words slurred? If they have difficulty speaking, that's aphasia. Or aphasia is really where they can't speak, because A means without. And dysphagia with an F, not a G, also means uh, difficulty speaking. So aphasia or dysphagia, facial symmetry. Do they have confusion? Are they oriented? So all of these things point to some sort of, we're looking for ischemic things happening in the brain. So with ischemia in the brain or hypoxia, they're going to have some sort of damage and it's going to show up in your neuro exam. Next we'll assess for AFib or any other heart conditions that cause a dysrhythmia. We will educate the patient and this is one of the main things we need to know is prevention of TIAs and if they've had a TIA, how can we help them prevent having another one? So we'll educate them. If they have diabetes, they need to keep their blood sugars under control. A chronic high blood pressure builds up plaque in the arteries. Decrease your blood pressure. So how do we decrease blood pressure? Take your medication, but more importantly, promote weight loss, exercise, good diet changes, 
you know, low fat, low cholesterol diet, low sodium diet, stop smoking because smoking increases sclerosis in the arteries and then alcohol use, decrease the amount of alcohol that you use. We'll also promote that low cholesterol and low fat diet and then they may even be prescribed like Lipitor or something that helps lower cholesterol. Treatments they may have. A carotid endoterectomy is a medical procedure where they cut the artery open. So take a look at my artery here. They cut it open and then they take out the fat. They take out the plaque that is inside the arteries that's clogging that artery. So they can actually take it out. An ectomy means to uh, cut and remove. So we'll remove that. Okay, so for a post-stop for this, we'll do the same neuro checks and neuro assessment. Now, I'll tell you about the stent here in a minute. Okay, so percutaneous transluminal angioplasty with a stent. So what they do is they go into the vessel and they don't cut it open, but they poke a hole in it or they go up through an artery. They go in through the artery and they deploy this stent. So they use little tiny instruments and they feed it up into the artery and then they deploy it. And when it deploys, it opens and spreads open. So that's what this stent is. It's a deployed stent inside the artery and it holds and squeezes the plaque out and holds the artery open so the blood flow can flow through easily. Medications that the patient will get is aspirin, 85 milligrams. It's generally the everyday dose. Sometimes they may go up to 325 milligrams, but studies show that a dose of 85 milligrams is sufficient enough to help prevent TIAs. But it is up to the physician what he wants to prescribe based off of the patient and their history. Plavix is another blood thinner or anticoagulant that they can receive. And then warfarin is a very common anticoagulant and this one definitely has to have blood draws to test for left therapeutic uh, PT-INR levels. Now the therapeutic INR level for warfarin is two to four. So anything less than two is considered not therapeutic and anything greater than four puts the patient at risk for bleeding. So remember, TIAs is our warning that a CVA is coming. So we definitely have to hone in those education, low fat diet, low cholesterol diet, diet and exercise, stop smoking, stop drinking, focus on weight loss, control your blood sugars, and take your medications. Now, let's go check out what CVA is and how it's different from a TIA.